Hi, welcome to NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering any question or challenge you have related to electrical and life safety. And we're going to use NFPA Link to do it, the easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards. Today we've been asked to cover the important points of electrical wiring in a patient care room. Let's get started. First thing we're going to do is go to direct, then we will click on space, and then we will select from our drop downs the patient care space, and then the options we have would be we're going to select patient care area electrical since we're dealing with electrical wiring. You will see a picture of a patient care space. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is the categories. That's very important. Patient category spaces are determined by the hospital governing body. So the hospital's governing body. So patient care spaces are broken down into four spaces. Category one are spaces for critical care such as operating rooms. Category two spaces are for general care. Category three are for basic care. And category four are for support areas. Knowing what category space you are in will help you to properly wire that area. Now we're gonna go into each of the definitions. In the 2020 code, the definitions are located in 517.2. The 2023 NEC, all definitions were moved to Article 100. We'll select that and it opens up into a pop-up, which is very easy to use. You slide down to patient care space and you will see defined more in depth that a category one space is a space in which the failure of the equipment or system is likely to cause major injury or death of patients, staff, or visitors. A category two general care space is a space in which the equipment or system failure would likely cause minor injury to patients, staff, or visitors. Category three is a basic care space in which the failure of the equipment or system is not likely to cause injury to patients, staff, or visitors, but might cause discomfort. Category four space is a space in which failure of the equipment or system is not likely to have a physical impact on a patient. Also note that a patient care vicinity is a space extending six feet beyond the normal location of the bed. We're gonna click the back button, which is very, very important to note so that you don't lose your spot. We're gonna jump into the nurse call system. As we all know, any of us that have been in a hospital, it's important to be able to call your nurse. And a nurse call systems, because they're important, are allowed to be powered by the EES, which is essentially the normal power backed up by an alternate source, such as a generator or battery system. It's allowed to be connected to that critical branch. The next step we're going to take is into receptacles. And we're gonna start with the category two space. Now each patient bed location, so that's in that area, is required to have a minimum of eight receptacles. And you'll see two, four, six, eight. And these are required to be listed hospital grade and so identified. And the identification is by the green dot in the corner. And these must be connected to two branch circuits, one from the normal power and one from the critical branch of the EES. Now the wiring in a patient bed location must have two equipment grounding conductors. One is the cable or raceway and the other is a wire type. 
That's why you see in many hospital locations or category two spaces, wiring installed in raceways or hospital grade type MC cable. Patient bed location lighting we're going to be talking about next. We'll click the back button and we will go to the lighting. Now there are three basic types of illumination in category one and category two spaces. One is normal illumination, two is task, and three is emergency. In a normal lighting, it would be your normal room lighting. We'll go back here to our picture. So you have your normal room lighting. Task illumination would be lighting designated for a specific task, maybe under the counter or the light over the patient's bed so they can see, or it may even be uh, lighting for the generator or backup power. Then you have your emergency illumination, which would be egress lighting. And in this case, it may be one of these normal lighting panels that would actually be powered by the life safety branch circuit as the backup source. The next object we're gonna to touch is receptacles in the category one space. This requires more. There are 14 receptacles required in a category one space. They are divided between two different branch circuits. One or more of these circuits can be from normal power and one or more from critical branch. The critical branch circuits are typically designated to the red receptacles, or in this case, you'll see red face plates. It might be both. And the ones connected to that critical branch, the adjacent receptacles must be connected to a different transfer switch. That way, the receptacles at the patient bed location will not be without power. The next we're going to jump into is our branch circuits. There are three branch circuits for an EES or an essential electrical system. They are the equipment branch, the life safety branch, and the critical branch. The equipment branch has equipment connected to it that must be restored um, upon power loss automatically, but done so at time lag intervals. So it's not, they don't automatically all come on. They come on um, in stages. The life safety and critical branch circuits, however, must have power restored to the equipment within 10 seconds of interruption. And that's where you might have your um, breathing machines, your ventilators, your uh, items that loss of power would be catastrophic to the person connected to it. We hope that answered a lot of your questions about electrical wiring in a patient care room. Be sure to visit nfpa.org forward slash link and give a link a try if you haven't already. As you just saw, link is truly a window to productivity.